Hi everyone. For this PowerPoint presentation, we're going to be covering the different epidermal layers and how the process of keratinization occurs. The epidermis is a stratified squamous epithelium, and as such, it has many of the characteristics described from the previous module. Can you guys name some of them? I suggest actually that you hit the pause button and name them. If you thought of a vascularity, cellularity, arranging layers, these are some of the characteristics that we can see on this image, right? This means that it has no blood vessels, that the cells are tied together with little or no space between them, and that they are arranged into layers as it is a stratified epithelium. Now let's talk about these different layers. First, we have the stratum basale, which is the deepest layer of the epidermis. It is composed of a single row of cuboidal, which are squared, or columnar, which are rectangular keratinocytes, which are the types of cells, and some of which are stem cells that will then undergo cell division to continually produce new keratinocytes. The nuclei of these keratinocytes, they're going to be large, and the cytoskeleton that's present inside of the cytoplasm is going to include these scattered intermediate filaments, which are called keratin intermediate filaments, also known as tonal filaments. These tonal filaments, they're going to form this tough protein that's called keratin in the more superficial layers of the epidermis. Keratin is important because it protects the deeper layers from injury. And these keratin intermediate filaments, they will also attach to desmosomes, which we know are cell junctions, which bind the cells of the stratum basale to each other within the same layer, and also to the adjacent cells that are located in the layer above, which is called stratum spinosum. In addition to binding to the desmosomes, these tonal filaments are going to bind to the hemidesmosomes, which are going to bind the keratinocytes to the basement membrane that's positioned between the epidermis and the dermis. Besides the keratinocytes and the stem cells, we also have the presence of melanocytes and these tectile epithelial cells, which are called Merkel cells, and we will talk more about the different cell types in the next slide. The stratum basale is sometimes also referred to as stratum germinativum. Germinativum means sprout. And this comes from the fact that the stem cells located in this layer will give rise to new keratinocytes. The next layer is the stratum spinosum, which is going to be superficial to the stratum basale. Spinosum means that it has spikes or thorn-like structures. Other than an occasional tectile epithelial cell, this stratum is going to consist of numerous keratinocytes, as you can see over here, forming from 8 to 10 layers. And these keratinocytes are actually produced by the stem cells that are located in the stratum basale. These keratinocytes present in the stratum spinosum, they're going to have the same organelles as the cells of the stratum basale, and some are actually going to retain their ability to divide and produce new keratinocytes. However, the keratinocytes of this region, they're actually going to produce a coarser bundle of keratin intermediate filament than those that are located in the basal layer. Although they are rounded and larger in living tissue, these cells of the stratum spinosum, they actually shrink and pull apart when they are prepared for microscopic examination, which we know is called histology, except where their membranes join at the desmosomes. So they will appear to be covered with these thorn-like spines. That's why it's called stratum spinosum. At each spine-like projection, there are going to be bundles of this keratin intermediate filament that will insert into the desmosomes, which tightly join the cells to one another. This arrangement actually provides both the strength and flexibility to the skin. In addition to these keratinocytes, 
there are going to be these intraepidermal macrophages, which are called Langerham cells. And we can also see the projection of the melanocytes in the stratum spinosum. So the cell body of the melanocytes are actually present in the stratum basale, but their projections go up to the stratum spinosum and sometimes all the way to the stratum granulosum, which is the next cell layer that we will be talking about. So the stratum granulosum, granulosum means little grains. It will consist of three to five layers of a little bit more flattened keratinocytes that are mainly trying to undergo apoptosis. If you recall from module two that apoptosis is going to be this orderly, genetically programmed cell death in which the nucleus will fragment before the cells die. Therefore, the nuclei and other organelles of these keratinocytes present in the stratum granulosum, they're going to begin to degenerate as they have moved farther away from the source of nutrition, which are the blood vessels present in the dermis. Even though the keratin intermediate filaments, they are no longer being produced by these cells, they do become more apparent because the organelles that are in the cells are regressing as they undergo apoptosis. Another important feature of the cells in the stratum granulosum is that they have the presence of this darkly staining protein granules, which are called keratohyalin which is involved in actually assembling the keratin intermediate filaments into keratin. Also present in the keratinocytes in this layer are these membrane enclosed lamellar granules, which are going to fuse with the plasma membrane and they're going to release a lipid rich secretion. This secretion is going to be deposited in the spaces between the cells of the three epidermal layers, the stratum granulosum, the stratum lucidum, and the stratum corneum. This lipid-rich secretion is going to act as a water repellent sealant that prevents the loss of body fluids and also it will prevent the entry of foreign materials. As their nuclei break down during apoptosis, the keratinocytes of the stratum granulosum they can no longer carry any of their vital metabolic reactions. And as they move up into the next two layers, which are the stratum lucidum and stratum corneum, they will die. Therefore, we can say that the stratum granulosum is actually the layer that will mark the transition between the deeper, the ones that are metabolically active strata and the dead cells of the more superficial strata. Next, we have the stratum lucidum, which means clear. And this layer is going to only be present in thick skin. So this is going to represent the areas of the palms of your hands, the fingertips, and the soles of your feet. It is going to be made up of four to six cell layers. These cells are going to appear flat, clear, and they're actually going to be dead keratinocytes. They will contain a large amount of keratin, and also the plasma membrane is going to appear a little bit thickened. The keratin is more regularly arranged parallel to the skin surface. This probably provides an additional level of toughness in this region of the thick skin. The stratum corneum is going to be the most superficial layer of the epidermis, it will consist on average of about 25 to 30 layers of flattened dead keratinocytes, but it can also range in thickness from a few cells in thin skin to up to 50 or more cell layers in thick skin. These keratinocytes, they're now gonna be called corneocytes, which are going to present themselves as extremely thin and flat, as you can see over here. They're also going to contain these packages of keratin that are inside of the plasma membrane. These corneocytes no longer contain any nuclei, as you can see from the image, or any internal organelles. They are the final product of the differentiation process of the keratinocytes. 
Remember, they started as stem cells all the way down in the stratum basale, and the stem cells differentiated into keratinocytes that matured all the way up to the stratum corneum, where they're now called corneocytes. As we can see from this image also, the corneocytes within each layer, they will actually overlap each other, resembling the skin of a snake. The neighboring layers of corneocytes also form this strong connection with one another. And this way, as they continuously shed, as they're replaced by cells from the deeper strata, they will shed in chunks due to the fact that these cells are kept close together and have strong connections. These multiple layers of dead cells, they will help the stratum corneum to protect deeper layers of the skin from injury and also from microbial invasion. In the previous slide, we talked about the different cell layers, and here we're going to be talking about the major cell types. We did talk a lot about keratinocytes, which mainly are the ones that constitute the epidermis. So 90% of the cells that are present on the epidermis will be keratinocytes. They are at different stages of development, but they're still keratinocytes. Also from the previous slide, we know that the keratinocytes, they will originate from stem cells. They will also secrete keratin, which is important for the keratinization of the epidermis. That's why we can say that the epidermis of skin is a keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. It will also produce these laminar granules which will start in the stratum granulosum, which is important as it's made up of lipids and it will serve as this water repellent sealant. The other cells that we talked about are the melanocytes. They're going to constitute 8% of the cells. And these cells are interesting because they are going to release what we call melanin. So melanin is released by melanocytes. One thing that I want you to be aware is that the melanocytes are going to be present in the stratum basale. So they're going to be present in the first cell layer. But notice how they will have projections that will go up definitely until the stratum spinosum. But sometimes in individuals that have darker skin, they might get all the way to the stratum granulosum. And the melanin that they secrete, which is represented over here by these little dots, they're going to be phagocytized by the keratinocytes. This means that the melanin that's released by the melanocytes will enter into the cytoplasm of the keratinocytes. And because melanin, it ranges from a yellow red or brown black pigment, it will be the one that will contribute to the skin color and it will also absorb damaging ultraviolet light from the sun. Once inside the keratinocytes, the melanin granules will cluster to form this protective membrane over the nucleus and it's going to be located on the side toward the surface of the skin, which will be the side that's more exposed to the sun. And in this way, they will protect the nuclear DNA from the damage by the UV light. Although their melanin granules effectively protect keratinocytes, melanocytes themselves are going to be particularly susceptible to the damage by UV light. That's why there are high incidence of melanoma in individuals that get exposed a lot to the sun. Another thing that it's important for you to understand is that all of us have the same amount of melanocytes. What's going to differ in the different types of skin color is the amount of melanin that the melanocytes produce and also if the projections of the melanocytes go all the way to the spinosum or if they reach the stratum granulosum. It does make sense that individuals that have darker skin, they will have melanin present at a higher up strata, which will be the stratum granulosum. Next, we have what we call the intraepidermal macrophage. 
intra means inside, so inside the epidermal, or also known as Langerhin cells. They will arise from red bone marrow, and then they will migrate to the epidermis, where they will constitute a small fraction of the epidermal cells. Like melanocytes, these Langerhin cells, they do have long arm-like projections, as we can see right over here and they are going to situate themselves among many surrounding keratinocytes. Because they are a type of macrophage, they will be the ones that are responsible for initiating this immune response that is mounted against microbes that are invading the skin. Just like melanocytes, these intraepidermal macrophages, they are easily damaged by UV light as well. Next, we have what we call the tactile epithelial cells, or also known as Merkel cells. They are the least numerous of the epidermal cells, and they're going to be located in the deepest layer of the epidermis, therefore in the stratum basale. These cells are a type of sensory neuron that will detect touch, and it makes sense that it detects touch instead of pressure, for example, as it is located further up in the skin. One thing that I want you to notice from this image is that we're missing the stratum lucidum, meaning that this image is representing thin skin instead of thick, because the stratum lucidum is only present in thick skin. As we have seen on the previous slides, the newly formed cells in the stratum basale, they're gonna be pushed slowly through the various layers of the skin surface. As these cells move from one epidermal layer to the next, they're going to accumulate more and more keratin in a process that's called keratinization. Then they will undergo apoptosis when they get to the stratum granulosum, and eventually the keratinized cells, they will shed, and they're going to be replaced by the underlying cells that in turn become keratinized. This process accounts for the changes in the characteristic of the keratinocytes as they mature into corneocytes, which are the terminally differentiated keratinocytes. The whole process by which the cells form in the stratum basale and then rise to the surface where they become keratinized and then shed off takes about four to six weeks in average and the rate of cell division in the stratum basale increases when the outer layers of the epidermis are stripped away, as in, for example, abrasions or in burns, then you're gonna have the stratum basale producing more cells as they're needed. And actually the mechanisms that regulate this remarkable growth are not very well understood but there are hormone-like proteins such as epidermal growth factor that do play a role in this process. This last slide is just a summary of all the things that we talked about with regards to the different layers of the epidermis, starting with the stratum basale, which is the deepest layer, going all the way to the stratum corneum.